specific testing. Okay, and so and so what what do you what do you rate? Stuff. So what do you rate the range as? What do you mean? You're saying that's the EPA's number. What's your number? Tesla doesn't have a number. You can hide your head in the sand. They're gonna find you when you're slipping off. Hi, my name is Robert Manny Jr. And first and foremost, I want to say that I have nothing against Tesla. I think it's uh, a growing company. I think it's an important company. I obviously own one, so I believe in the company and the cars. Um, but this is my recent experience when my battery failed in my Model S 60 Tesla, and it was replaced with a battery that had less range than the one that failed. I hope this is helpful and informative um, to anyone who has gone through this process or is going through this process or will go through this process and trying to figure out what to do when something like this happens. The warranty specifically says that the battery is supposed to be replaced with one of equal capacity or greater and what do you do when that doesn't happen? Well, so you can skip to the table of contents and go right to what you want to see um, to the meat of the problem or if you like you can see the entire journey this is a trip from new york city to florida which we luckily made and the battery failed after we arrived at our destination okay take care hope everybody is healthy and safe and again i hope this is informative you can hide your head in the sand they're gonna find you when you're slipping off I'm, sure, I'm trying to get away from my kids real quick. Um, so yeah, it was yeah charged all the way up. It's only 173. Mm -hmm. And what were you used to seeing on your your previous battery? Well, we never charge. You know, we hardly ever charge it up to 100. percent So I don't know, but I, you know, last you know when it's at 90, that's what it was. You know, around 90, it was at that. So, you know, we just. So it, it was just very odd to me for, you know, I, of course, I bought this car 
CPO from Tesla, so I have no idea what battery it's on or what, you know, if it's the original battery, but, you know, to have a 2014 <laughs> with, you know, if I'm assuming it's a six-year-old battery and then get less miles when you replace the battery, that's deeply concerning. So, when you said you bought a CPO, what year did you buy it? Um, I bought it in 2019, so not that long, okay. not, not that long, long, not that long ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's still under warranty. And you said when that was 90 percent, it was about 180 it, something. You know, I was like 179, 178. Yeah, 90 percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I will say, um, before I called you, I did a quick auto auto diag remote diagnosis. Uh -huh. The battery looks just fine. Um, if there was any problem, it would have thrown some alert to you, similar to the last one. Yeah. Um, but the other part is, now that previous battery, the owner, I don't know if it was the same owner, or it, it already had two different owners. Either way, that battery was used to one person driving it before you bought it. Right. And so when you bought it, it had to learn how you drive. The problem is, not, not really a problem, the situation is, it had so much more data to go off of that old battery. This new one, it's compared to an infant, you know, it doesn't know anything. And these batteries, they, they learn. Typically, in the first six months to a year is when the range varies, the estimated range varies the greatest. Um, after a year or so, it typically steadies out. But you never saw that before to this degree because that battery that was in the previous car, or the previous battery, was already broken in, so to speak. Well, so that's, the thing is... No, I, I mean, I, I understand that, and I understand the theory of that, but I could also come back and say, when the car, you know, you buy a Tesla brand new, there is no data in that battery. And when you charge right. it all the way up, guess what? It's not going to say, you know, 173 for... You know what I mean? So, you know, that's just very difficult for me to, to swallow when you put another battery, you know, in a car to say, you know what, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, the fact that it, the battery doesn't have history shouldn't, should not affect what the range says. I mean, I understand the theory of what you're saying, but then that should hold true for a new car that comes off of Tesla's assembly line. I just don't, I don't understand. And then I also don't understand, you know, it's, we have to drive the car. And, and we, you know, I can only go by what it says. And so, you know, when we have to drive back to New York City, here's the thing, you know, the, the, the battery was replaced. We did not expect to get less range than what we had before. I can't imagine that it says in any, in any of your documentation that if a battery is replaced, you get less range that you had before, and that's okay. Um, so that's, you know, I'm sure you can understand my concern. The other concern is we drove down here from New York. You know, we have a small battery car because we live in New York City and never thought, you know, we just didn't need it. Um, and then, the, you know, this madness happens, and we were like, we, you know, we came down to our house in Florida, and that was a brutal drive. And I don't want, you know, at some point in the next month or so, we have to drive back. And, you know, one, the car has less value if it has less miles. Two, it's going to take us that much longer to get back to New York. And it's not that, you know, um, I, just, I just don't understand. So the, the range that it gives you, that's really only an estimation. There, there's parts in the battery. I just had this, these words in my head, and I just forgot. Them. Um, let me figure out how to say this. So the range that you see doesn't necessarily reflect the, I guess I could say, capacity of the battery. Just because you're seeing that doesn't mean the battery is worse or better. You know, the majority of the time that number all the time, that number that you see is calculated based on every single input 
to the car. It's like how hard you press the pedal, the speed you're constantly going at, the not really the the road condition or the tires, but how you know the car is noticing that it's not getting very far now, and it happens that the tires are low. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. I do. No, I mean you're explaining it. I do understand. I, you know, I just, you know, you, 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 you know, it's like you're saying, wait, wait six months to a year to see what happens, and I don't really have that time. Um, to wait six months or a year for that to happen, you know, if I wait a year and it still hasn't changed, what do I do? What's my recourse? And I don't think, you know, in a year, any, I don't know what my recourse is. Any time before that year, actually, you can schedule an appointment and say, hey, I'm concerned about my range. I was getting this, now I'm getting this. And we can run that same auto diag that I did, the remote diagnostic. From there, we can tell basically how good the battery is at retaining energy. And, it, and again, when I checked, is great. Okay, but can you tell me how much range is in the battery then? No, the range differs. That's that's an estimation based on a multitude of factors. That's what I was trying to say. Because it's got all these systems in it that calculate that. We don't do that on our end. I, I got you. So do I you? Do you, do you find, I mean, do you think that? Do you think that thirty? between 30 and 40 miles less than rated range is is that supposed to be acceptable so, so that 206 number where what what number is that from that's just from you that's from you that's from your website that's what was the EPA that's what was posted when I bought the car that's what it said now I didn't expect because I wasn't buying a new car I didn't expect it to be at that range but I expected it to be close and it was so that's just that's just what you guys post on your website so that's not me coming up with a number so that's that's what that's what I'm going off of I'm not going off of anything that somebody said or some other website or that's that's the information that you provide so I'm figuring that's the EPA range because I'm I wasn't in at Tesla back when the 60 kilowatt hour batteries were being made. I was, I've was i never seen the EPA range for that. I guess it's 206. Which 208 is what it says, but, but, but that's, what, yeah. that's your information. That's not from me. Yeah. Correct. And that number is actually the EPA's information. We only quote it because you have to. Similar to the gas car. You know, the EPA quotes, this will get this many miles to the gallon in the city and then the highway. Right. Or this many miles of range on a full tank it's the same same case here and that that number was obtained through very specific testing okay and so like, and so what what do you up what do you rate stuff. so what do you rate the range as what do you mean you're saying that's the EPA's number what's your number Tesla doesn't have a number okay so that's what I'm saying. So you got it. So, so you understand. Okay. So your current cars, they have a warranty, and if that this is your current warranty, not your previous warranty, but your current warranty says that if a car's range drops seventy percent, right? If you get if you all of a sudden getting seventy percent, then then that's considered unacceptable. So you're, you're obviously basing that off of a number, and you're actually basing that number off of the EPA number. So there has to be a number if you're saying 70%. So that doesn't, really, that doesn't really hold really water. Really, whatever. That does, I'm just saying. really whatever the customer is getting. Because, I mean, someone else with the exact same conditions as you might be getting a different number. And that's only because they're driving the vehicle differently or they live in a different environment. I understand the cold and heat, and I got, I got it. My point now right. is that your current warranty says 70% for Model S and X. If the battery de- degradation, if you're getting 70% of capacity, then that's a warranty claim to replace the battery. 
that's what your current documentation says. So if you have a percentage, it has to be based on a number. It must be that number. I haven't reviewed that part of the warranty. It's, but it's, I'm saying, well, well, I please, looked. please, please review it because that's what it says. So it has to be based on a number. Right. So there is a number is what I'm saying. So there's a number that you provide. Now you could that say that number EPA is not number the EPA, is. EPA number. I don't, but it has to be a number. So I need a number. That would have to be the EPA's number. That's really the only okay. static number. So that then I've that's ever heard of. so then that's 208. So my question is, if you just replace my battery, I just need to know. You know, I need to know what that is. Mm -hmm. What's normal? You mean? Yeah. You need to know what's what. Yeah, I need to know. That is normal. So you're saying 173 now, at 100 percent is normal? It could be. I mean, again, it's more dependent on how you drive the vehicle than anything else. I haven't driven the vehicle. The the vehicle literally came from the shop yesterday. So a, a battery was put in. It came from the shop yesterday. I charge it from 100 to 100 percent, and it says 173. So correct. So it ha that has nothing to do with how I drive the car because I haven't driven the car since that battery was installed. If that's the case, then it is honestly too soon to tell. Well, well based on what you're seeing. Okay. But based on what so, we are seeing, the battery I'm sorry, is we're, we're talking in circles. Fine. We're talking in circles, and this is not. You know, it's. You're just telling me that oh, I'll, I may never know what the rated range is. It could be it could be anything in a year. I I just need to know is there some recourse if the battery is saying a hundred one seventy three at a hundred percent, and you just put another battery in. I'm sure right you can now, understand. No, sir, I'm sure you can understand right. my concern. I, I'm sure you would be concerned right. if if you bought a Tesla and it was rated at a certain range and you got in and it was 30 to 40 miles below that range. I get you, I do. Um, again, if we run that diagnostic and it shows the battery is fine, that means it, it is fine. The number you're seeing is such an early number from you know when it was replaced. It's, it's too soon to tell, it will steady out. And the next charge, it could show much higher, it could show much lower, because it, it doesn't have enough data to go on to make a steady calculation. Okay, so it's obvious that I'm going to have to... That number to, could change. Okay, it's obvious. I mean, I don't want to have to go through this again, but it's obvious I'm going to have to go through it again. Fine. I'll go through arbitration again. Thank you. So that's where I am, and that's where this is. Um, when I spoke on the phone about arbitration before, it was regarding the premium connectivity in a car, and um, that was nowhere in anybody's contract, or um, that premium connectivity was a trial um, for anyone that bought a, a certified pre-owned or used Tesla from Tesla. Um, so, you know, Tesla, I don't know if they came to their senses or realized, they just realized it wasn't in anyone's contract. And so they um, said the premium connectivity was for um, all cars purchased before 2020. Now, if you notice Tesla's website and the contract, they've updated it to show that if you buy a used or certified pre-owned, whatever you want to call it, or a new Tesla, that um, premium connectivity is a trial now um, and then after the trial is up, that you would pay $10 a month. That's what it is currently. But now, you know, my car, it's premium connectivity is there for life. Unlimited supercharging is there for life of the car. And so, yeah, so that's, that's what I had to do for arbitration before. But if anybody knows, arbitration doesn't really benefit the consumer if you have to do it. Um, what I didn't know is that you can opt out of arbitration, so this is something that was in my contract. I don't know if it's in the current contract, but my contract when I purchased the car, it said you can opt out within 30 days by informing Tesla that you want to opt out. 
of arbitration and that way you could actually sue them. Um, so pay attention to your contract and what it says because you can opt out of arbitration and that, that is the best thing you can do because you don't want to deal with arbitration. It's just a flawed system. I actually just read a, a great article in Consumer Reports about arbitration and how it doesn't benefit the consumer. I'll actually link the information in the below so that you can see it. Um, but it's a really great article and it talks about arbitration and how it doesn't benefit the consumer. Um, for example, if I wanted to say, hey, um, you know, they're in possession of my old battery. If I wanted to say, hey, I want to know the capacity of my old battery, um, they're not going to give it up. They're not required to. Now, if this was a court system and not an arbitrator, they would have to give me certain information. If I said, hey, what is the range of a 60 kilowatt battery? They would have to give me that information. I believe under arbitration, they don't. Um, so, you know, they have that information posted on their website. So obviously I have that. But if they remove that, then what do you, what do you get? What do you know? Um, so just know that arbitration really isn't beneficial. It is expensive for Tesla to go through arbitration. It's not so expensive for the consumer to do so. Um, so that's a benefit. But otherwise, as far as getting information from Tesla, you know, good luck. So if you have any advice for me on how to deal with this situation, I am going to move forward and go through arbitration and see what happens. And I will let everyone know what happens. Um, but if you have any advice or any insight or concerns or just say, hey, man, good luck. Um, please leave it in the comments below. OK, thanks a lot. Robert Manning Jr. signing off again. Take care. Be healthy. Hope you're safe. Bye.